All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie, welcome back. We're back with another video and back with another unboxing, a monster of a box set. Uh, this is continuing with the uh, Jethro Tull anniversary uh, reissues, this time for Broadsword and the Beast. And this is described as the 40th anniversary monster edition. Uh, monster edition, uh, meaning a lot of music on here. This is, I wanna say five CDs and three DVDs. So an eight disc set all together, uh, continuing in their sort of book uh, reissue style. And so we're gonna take a look inside. Now I've already taken the shrink off this and uh, this is I think gonna be my second or third attempt at this uh, video and there's a reason why. So let's uh, again uh, find out what's inside. Uh, there's a 164 page book, an extensive article by Martin Webb on the writing, recording and touring of the album with contributions from Ian Anderson Anderson, Martin Barr, David Pegg, and the like. Uh, also a track-by-track -track annotation. There's plenty of interviews, a recreation of the uh, 1982 tour program. Also the 1981-82 recording and touring information and rare photos and memorabilia. So that's what's in the 164 page book. Uh, disc one is Broadsword and the Beast, a Stephen Wilson stereo remix with associated recordings. Again, Stephen Wilson stereo remix. Disc two is associated recordings, early 1981 sessions. Again, Steve Wilson stereo remix with further associated recordings. We move on to CD three. Disc three is demo recordings original 1981 master mixes on a few tracks and early 1982 rough mixes on tracks and including a 1982 radio advert. <laughs> there you go, a radio advertisement. Discs four and five, the CDs, is live in Germany at various locations across Germany from 1982, Stephen Wilson stereo remix, and then three DVDs. And I believe they're all audio only DVDs. DVD one is the Broadsword and the Beast album remixed and uh, DVD two, is the Associated Recordings remix, and then DVD3 is live in Germany 1982 uh, remix. So lots of uh, material on here. And so we'll take a look inside. Now it's interesting uh, for this, I think because there's so many discs uh, included with the booklet, that this is the first time I believe um, that they've put in any sort of like a little cardboard divider, because I think maybe concerns with the uh, discs uh, rubbing onto the uh, to the other uh, material here. So they've got that at the front and in the back as well. So I think that's the first time they've ever done that. Uh, it's too bad they didn't put a little, <laughs> I don't know, Jethro Tull sticker or something like that on it. Now with these C, uh, with these uh, box sets uh, in this book style, uh, lots of material, lots of music. The unfortunate thing is that they have all the CDs and the DVDs overlapping. They include some of the extra DVDs on these. I've always uh, kind of wished that they would just have the CDs in these sort of separate things rather than layering them on here. Uh, you know, I don't really care for the layering. And I've also found uh, with this uh, in particular, it's pretty hard to get the CDs out. They're really clipped in rather tightly. Uh, so we're going to try our best. And I've had some issues uh, when I was trying to record this earlier of just really struggling, as I'm kind of struggling now, to try to get that first disc out, but we've got it out. So there is simply disc one, of course, on the uh, Chrysalis uh, label. And then we'll move on to disc two, uh, associated recordings. And then a uh, nice uh, label for disc three. Uh, disc three, um, Maison Rouge kind of thing. I don't know if you can see that properly. Very nice. And then again, with these uh, box sets uh, for these books, uh, there's lovely attention to detail, really nice artwork. And then for this though, we kind of have to move our way back. So I won't, uh, show you what's in here because uh, it's as we continue sort of on the back uh, then we have um, cd four five and then the first dvd uh, they have that all lined up like that again you know really nice artwork and everything like that but again it's a bit of a struggle to make you feel you're almost gonna they're snapped in so tightly they're easy to put back in uh, but they're kind of difficult to get out and i had some luck uh, with the first one but it's kind of and I don't know if there's a magic trick uh, to these that I'm not aware of, considering I have so many of these box sets. Some of them uh, aren't layered as much. Some of them are just uh, layered like one or two CDs kind of thing. Uh, so there you have Live in Germany 1982 Part 1. And then we have Live in Germany 1982 uh, Part 2 or Disc 5. And then we move on to the DVDs. 
and then we have DVD one, but then they have sleeves for the other DVDs, but we'll take a look again at the artwork on the back, which pretty much uh, matches the front. And then DVD one is in here, in this little sleeve here, quite simply, lovely artwork on the DVDs, again, DVD audio. And then we move on to the front that has the DVD here for DVD three. Okay, <laughs> so if you followed all that, now we can take a look at uh, at the book. And again, uh, as always, amazing uh, with these um, with these books that are included with the uh, Jethro Tull anniversary reissue. So much text, um, great pictures. Again, a little you know a little bit more on the smallish side, um, as opposed to a booklet that you would get, of course, uh, with an LP size. But nonetheless. Absolutely terrific, and it's almost exhaustive, uh, the weight, like it's so much analysis, you know, great interviews. I almost wonder if they, sh maybe when it's all said and done with uh, these reissues, although we still have uh, many to go, I think this is the uh, Jethro Tull's 14th album, I want to say. Uh, it'd be interesting to almost put these books all together in sort of like a big coffee table style book. I don't know, maybe just an idea. Uh, this album produced by, uh, which is interesting, uh, this album is produced by Paul Samuel Smith of the Yardbirds fame. And I think this is the only Jethro Tull album that uh, he produced. And uh, so it's 1982, uh, still having kind of the sort of the folky stuff. But then, you know, we're getting giving way to synthesizers that they would later explore uh, with the album Under Wraps. And then Ian Anderson's solo work. Uh, so it was. This is certainly early '80s, uh, with the way music in general was going. So uh, continued quite a transition. And I think I was reading the other day uh, that uh, uh, Steve Hackett of Genesis, apparently, uh, according to uh, an article, really uh, quite likes this album. It's one of his uh, favorite Jethro Tull albums, which I did not know. And as I say, it also includes the lyrics and everything like that, which is always quite nice. But in terms of bang for your buck uh, with these uh, Jethro Tall reissues that are not outrageously expensive, you really do get a uh, very good bang for your buck. And as I say, certainly the the book, you, know, you almost can't say booklet. It's almost in terms of the book uh, that it's included uh, really gives you your money's worth. Hopefully you're able to see enough of that. And just a few more pages here. Okay. And fabulous, fabulous uh, reissue series. And thankfully, uh, with them reissuing uh, Thick as a Brick, I now have them all, <laughs> which is quite nice. All right. And again, so much, so much information with this. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, okay, so that is going to do it for this one. Again, it's another fabulous uh, reissue. Going to be <laughs> lots to explore with this one. Jethro Tull, The Broadsword and the Beast, 40th Anniversary Monster Edition. And it certainly is a monster edition. So that's going to do it for me, uh, Jamie. And uh, we'll chat again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.